Breaking the wall of teaching correctly. Varun Kapoor, Max Planck Institute for Biophysikalische Chemie, Germany. Yeah, evening everyone. So I would like to break the wall on how not to destroy scientific curiosity by teaching correctly by giving you two examples. We all at some point must have wondered how mirrors actually work, but we never really got the correct answer. Mirrors consist of metals, and these metals have loosely bound electrons. When light strikes this metal surface, these loosely bound electrons they oscillate, and oscillating electrons emit radiation. However, since it's a metal, these electrons can move only in a very specific way because the field inside the metal has to be zero. So when the electrons perform this dance uh, of uh, killing the field inside the metal, the emitted field has just to flip the perpendicular component of the incident field. And when the electrons move in this way, we get the reflected light. And that's how the mirrors work. As another example, we all have heard about the Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc square. But why does E equals mc square? Where does this come from? Now, it come, the reason it does so is because of this. Say we are interested to observe an event A. We want to observe when and where it happens. We could either be stationary, as in the black axis, and see the space and the time of when the event happens, or we could be moving, as in the blue axis. In the 19th century uh, understanding of space-time, it was the time was something absolute. For the same event, you would measure the same time if, if you're stationary or moving. However, this changed in the 20th century when we considered the particles which are moving close to the velocity of light. Now, the time was no longer absolute, and you had a new understanding of space and time. It was called space-time. When we changed this definition of space-time, other things also changed. Things like energy and momentum, which are conserved in a physical and chemical reaction, now, these quantities are still conserved in this new definition of space-time. What changes is their mathematical form. And when they worked out what the mathematical form is for the conserved energy, they got E equals mc squared. So the idea here is that if you want to explain something, a natural process, first you draw an intuitive picture of the process. That intuitive picture you can explain with certain mathematics just to explain the picture. But the condition here is that your intuitive picture which you're drawing should be then backed by the mathematical development of the theoretical physics. And that would come at the end, showing you the complete mathematics behind this process. But the first, you should show just this uh, intuitive picture about this process. And now, how can we go about this? So the natural scientists who are experts in their fields, and they think they can answer and contribute uh, to a particular physical process which they want to answer, they can contribute to this uh, platform which I'm trying to build, which is called the Nature Storytellers, which is for the students and the general public members where they can ask questions and, in, and um, uh, look at all the answers which are already there. And by doing so, we can use technology to break the wall of teaching correctly.